Praise the Lord. So Matthew 24, verse 11 is where we're going to be this morning as a start. Yes, this is very important. You've got to take notes. I just want to say that with what we're talking about this morning, we'll be talking about discerning true and false ministers or prophets this morning. This is probably not going to be the best teaching you've ever heard on this subject. If you've heard teachings on this subject before, um, you're not going to know everything you need to know from this one message. Because as I was digging and studying and the Lord put this in my heart to deal with, um, it, is, it can be quite exhaustive. There's, there's probably more points, more things to share than what I'm going to share, but this will be a good start for you. Matthew 24, verse 11, Jesus said this, Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. It didn't say a few will rise up. It says many will rise up. I will tell you, it's, it's interesting that when the Lord wants you to, to directly address something, he will put it before you multiple times through multiple people or even multiple avenues. So this conversation came up earlier in this week. Really got my wheels turning. Talked with some fellow ministers about this subject. Really got my wheels turning. And then there were two or three different people along the way throughout the week where the mention of false ministries and false prophets um, were brought up. Even on our uh, my Facebook, uh, I did happen to do Facebook Live with Apostle Joe last week, and somebody shared the video, and they said, watch out for false spirits and false prophets. They say God sent them, but they haven't. Beware. All right. And then there's another person that's involved with missionary work that I actually just recently sold into the ministry to get some Thanksgiving baskets and stuff put together for a needy area, a needy country. And they just made a post this last week about uh, false teachers and said, the only, and a little meme said, the only reason why these people last is because of the people that support them. And they wrote on that meme, they said this. Uh, People need to quit paying attention to these maniacs who claim to have tribes and hubs. Huh. Okay. So, so over and over again throughout this week, this has been directed towards us, me, Apostle Joe. Uh, somebody I talked with just Friday said that somebody brought to them about Apostle Joe's network being a false ministry. <coughs> So you hear, so this is a reoccurring thing throughout this week, so it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And so you've been sitting, you guys obviously are here sitting underneath this ministry. And you need to know if this ministry is a true ministry or not. It's important to put this ministry to the test. That's I'm good. not telling you to bury your head in the sand. Yeah. Put this ministry to the test. That's put good. what I preach and I teach to the test. Because here's the thing. Sometimes false prophets... False prophets don't always start out as false prophets. Wow, that's good. Yeah. They can go astray. Yeah. And so, so, so what you need to do is you don't need to develop a critical um, spirit that's always operating under the gift of suspicion right. that's good. instead of discernment. But we do need to be aware. Yes. I don't think we should be in a frantic mess to always figure out and always, got, you know, you can overwhelm yourself in this. And Jesus doesn't want us to overwhelm ourselves or burden ourselves to the point of anxiety with this. What he wants us to do is to be aware and watchful. Okay? And so, because many false prophets are going to rise. Now, in the context of Matthew 24, uh, Jesus is talking about the signs of the end of the age and of his coming. Because the disciples asked him, what are the signs? How will we know? That you're, that you're coming. When, how do we know when the kingdom is going to come? How do we know when the end of the age is going to come? And there are people that, that will argue whether Jesus is really talking about our day or not. And there are people who will argue whether we're in the last days or not. But can I tell you, whether you actually believe we're living in the present last days or not, the teaching, the knowledge of how to identify false prophets 
should still be very prevalent. We should know about it because even in Apostle Paul's day, Peter, John, they all addressed the issue of false prophets. False prophets is not a new concept. It's not just something that will happen in the last day. It will happen, and it's been happening since the beginning. It's been happening before Jesus' time. There's mention of how to test a prophet in the Old Testament. Yes. And then in the New Testament. So there's always been false prophets. But can I tell you, if you do believe that we are in the last days, you need to know something about the last day. There is a prophetic promise about an outpouring of God's Spirit. Joel 2, in the last yes. day, says, God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. The sons and daughters will prophesy. Mm -hmm. Okay? There is a promise. The prophetic will increase in the last hour. The true prophetic gifting and anointing and office of the prophet should grow and expand in the last day. Right. However, Whenever God begins to establish and do something in the earth, the enemy always brings up a counterfeit. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay? There are true prophets, and then there are false prophets raised up by Satan's kingdom. There are true preachers, and there's preachers who are planted by Satan himself. There are true tongues, and there are demonic tongues. Yes. Right. Yeah. There are true words of knowledge, there's demonic words of knowledge. Yeah. There are true signs and wonders, and there are false signs and wonders. And what I mean by false signs and wonders is not that the, the sign or the wonder is actually not really happening. It actually happened, but you've got to understand that even demonic spirits can perform things. So whenever God says this is going to happen, the enemy's going to ride, ride it, come in. You know, he's going to come in like a flood. He's going to try to pervert. He's going to try to disrupt. And so what happens is... Somebody who's in the name of the Lord will speak a word that's not of the Lord, do a sign that's not of the Lord, and it brings confusion to what is true. That's why 1 John 4, 1 says, Do not believe every spirit, but test and see whether from God, for many false prophets have gone out from the world. So, Matthew 24, 24 says, False Christ and false prophets will arise, perform great signs and wonders, as to lead astray, even possible, the elect. So just know the deception is, is so real that even the false prophets can appear like God's prophets. They can do signs and wonders that are real, but it's all for the purpose of deception and leading astray. So how do we know, how do we discern between, well, let me just back up and say this. In 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen 13 through 15, here's what I'm, my point I'm trying to make. The devil doesn't come with dressed in red. All right. He comes dressed in light. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen through 15 says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Evangelist Don Brankle said it this way. The devil does not come to you wearing horns and carrying a pitchfork. He comes with credentials to preach. That doesn't mean that if somebody has credentials, they're not of God. The point is, the false minister will look the part and play the part. Right. <laughs> Hear me. They will look the part. They will play the part. The devil's not going to show his hand. He will not come obviously to you. False prophets will look the part and have signs to confirm that fakeness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is why we must know the difference. I'm talking about discerning the truth between the true and the false. Everybody say the word discern. Discern. And say the word discerning. Discerning. Okay. We need to be a discerning ministry. Yes. So good, great. We don't need to bury our head in the sand. Can, can I tell you that from the beginning, from the beginning, 
we have had people try to weasel their way in. From the very time yeah. that I had our, we had two house meetings before we started meeting in this building. Somebody heard through the grapevine about the house meeting. So they messaged my wife, can we come to this? Red flag, meeting in the spirit. Nope. And so on the second public service we had here, I happened to be gone. Well, guess who showed up? That individual. They tried to pray and give a word, and there was correction brought, and they have not been back since. Praise God. So, can I tell you, we need to be discerning. So good. Very discerning. Um, Dr. David Remedio says this, big lights attract bugs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, if the word of the Lord that has been spoken... If, if I've heard a true word from the Lord that we will be known for revival and deliverance, light, you can expect that the fruit, nuts, and flakes will come in. Yeah, so good. They have come. They have, they, and thank God he has been very protective of our ministry. Okay. And so just know this, the word discern or to be discerning simply means to be able to make good judgment. It's interesting in the world we live in that people say, do not judge. God says not to judge. Well, there is a gift called discernment. You might say that there's a gift of judgment. Wow. So what's the difference? There... Jesus didn't say you could not judge. He said that, but when you judge, just know that the measure which you yeah, judge yeah, is going to yeah, be right, the measure yeah. by which you are judged also. That's right. So you better get your head in the prayer closet, yeah. clear out all the planks that are in your eye. Yeah. I mean, there's a big old two by four coming out of your eye socket, and you're worried about sawdust yeah. in so and so's eye. You need wow. so before you bring correction, point out things. You need to look internally first and make sure you are clear. So there is nothing wrong with me. Matter of fact, the Bible, the Apostle Paul teaches in Corinthians that we don't judge the world. We don't judge sinners. We right. judge those within the house of God. That's good. Yeah. Right. So if somebody, a pastor, a preacher, we should be examining what is being taught. That's good. Right. That's good. Examine what I teach you. <laughs> I'm telling you to examine what I teach you. Put the test what I teach you. You have to judge or test. Isn't that what 1 Thessalonians 5.21 teaches us? The context of that is in regards to the prophetic ministry, the prophetic utterance. It says to examine everything, to test everything carefully. Yeah. So... If we're to test the word carefully, how much more should we test the messenger who carried the word? We must test the prophet. We must test the teacher. Let me just say this going forward. When I mention prophets and teachers, preachers, put them together. Okay? So we need to test. We need to examine. Because the last thing we want to do is be misled. We, I don't want to be on the wrong path. Before I came to Christ, before you came to Christ, you were on the wrong path. Right. Yeah. And Lord knows we don't want to get on the wrong path after we've been on the right path. Come on. So long. So how many of y'all have seen these Facebook posts about, you know, it's got the little red flags. They said, when you see this, red flags. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know? Uh, and some of them are quite comical, but you know, there the Holy Spirit will give you a red flag. Yes. And there's red flags in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So let me just say this to start with. Our basis for everything we preach and teach should be this Bible. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. We start getting away from what the Bible teaches. We are on a slippery slope, a dangerous slope. So everything must begin in the Word of the Lord. Yes. Anybody who tells you that there is extra revelation that does not have to line up with the word of God. It is an error. Mm. 
So make sure that when you hear something, the Bible says don't be carried away by every wind of doctrine. Yes. Right? Because you'd be tossed back and forth. I remember early in my walk, because I was raised Baptist, then I got baptized Holy Spirit around these Pentecostal service, uh, services, and I was hearing this and this, and I was tossed around. So you have to be careful who you open yourself up to. So let's talk about, let's start with the red flag. What are some things to look for in being able to pass good judgment on whether somebody's a true minister or a false minister? Number one, when what they say does not come to pass or come true. That's red flag number one. Deuteronomy 18.22 says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. The test of a true minister, prophet, first thing you look at is, is what they're saying. Is it, do they have a record of things coming to pass? Right. Of things being found sound or true within Scripture? Mm -hmm. So if you're married and you're going through a rough time in your marriage and somebody gives you a word that you're supposed to divorce your spouse, <laughs> red flag, right. okay, that's pretty obvious, okay? It's pretty obvious, but you need to really examine. Um, I, I will tell you that there have been people that have prophesied things that didn't sit right, and you know what? They did not come to pass. So a true prophet, a seasoned prophet, will have a track record of true things and things coming to pass. <clears throat> if they got all these words that just... They, there's no weight to them. You never see any fruit from them. Red flag. Number two. Red flag number two. They preach and prophesy things that don't lead you to Jesus. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay. When they might preach about Jesus. But if what they're preaching does not lead you to a deep, loving relationship with Jesus, red flag. Mm -hmm. So check this out. 2 Peter 2, 1 says, But false prophets also rose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them bringing swift destruction upon themselves. A false prophet or teacher will deny the lordship of Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, again? that is 2 Peter 2.1. You want to really go deep on false prophets? Go home and study 2 Peter chapter 2. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to dig out and bring this morning, but I just, I couldn't put all the pieces of the puzzle together. They will deny that Jesus is the only way. So there are people preaching that God our Father and the God of and the, the God of Muhammad, the Muslim faith, are the same. Right. Red flag. Mm -hmm. People that teach that Jesus is not only is not the only way, but a way that is a false teacher, false prophet. Listen to what Jude verse 4. If you want to write these scripture references down, Jude verse 4. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our Lord God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord. Yeah. Listen, there are people that will deny Jesus as Lord. You may hear teaching that sounds like this. Jesus can be your Savior, but He may not be your Lord. Red flag. He is the master. When you give your life to Jesus, yes, he does save you. He is your savior. But when you really give your life to Jesus, he becomes your master. Right. 
You are not your own. You are bought with a price. You belong to him. If he's not your Lord, if he's not your master, if you are not obeying the rules of the master, you don't belong to him. That's right. I'm not talking about sinless perfection, but there is this heart bend. There is this trajectory of your life that says, I submit to Jesus as Lord. In Jude 4, it says they turn the grace of God into licentiousness. You know what that is? It's where you they teach that you can be relaxed on the rules. Somebody who has that type of spirit, they bring the command. They're, they're followed loosely. When God says don't sin, he means don't sin. When he says abstain from fornication and sexual morality, it's what he means. It doesn't mean, well, if your spouse wants to have an open marriage, it's okay. No, it's not. The word of God says it. There's no relaxing on the rules. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not preaching legalism to you this morning. God has a standard. Yeah. We are expected to keep the standard. Our righteousness doesn't come by keeping the standard. But once you enter into the grace of God, the grace of God teaches you to keep the standard. Yes. It doesn't yes. teach you just, oh, it's okay, it's no big deal, you can live any way you want to and still make heaven. That's what Jude 4 is teaching you. I was under that teaching before. I grew up under that teaching. I heard people preach that you could pray a prayer and then go out and kill yourself and you still make heaven. Is that, I mean, guys, you, when people teach this stuff, kind of stuff, you have to read the whole Bible, know the whole counsel of God. Yeah. That, is not, that is not in line with sound teaching. It's not sound doctrine. So hold on, I'm preaching. <laughs> so you need to know that people will come. Now, here's something you need to, this is going to blow your minds when I read Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. It says this, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, the sign or the wonder comes true concerning which he spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods whom you do not know and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God is testing you to find out if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Do you realize what this Bible verse has said? That when somebody who's a prophet has a sign or a wonder that proves to be true, but yet they say, let's not follow Jesus, we can do this. Or Jesus wants you, doesn't want you to have to necessarily walk underneath all the rules. Mm. See, false prophets have signs following their preaching, but yeah. then their preaching, their signs, lead you away from submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's a false prophet. Yeah. Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 3 says it. Says that they can even have a dream or a sign or a wonder prove true, but then they'll use that as a way to get you to follow other gods. Deuteronomy, what? Deuteronomy 13, verse 1 through 3. It's in your Bible. Here's what you need to know about false teachers. False teachers and false prophets have an intent to mislead you for their own gain. Yes, mm -hmm. that's good, Grady. Yep. Yep. Maybe getting ahead of myself, but I feel the unction of the Lord. Yep. You need to know, whenever you're under teaching, whenever you're under ministry, what you need to ask yourself about Brother Grady is what is Brother Grady gaining from me? What is he gaining from me? That's a valid question to ask from a, about a minister. It's what are they trying to gain from me? Because a false prophet will gain a following to validate platform, to validate what they'll they'll gain a following for finances. Not every preacher who takes a salary from a church is gaining great, is, is living in greed, and you no, know, sharing the sheep for their own gain. Mm -hmm. Right. It takes work to do the ministry. Yeah. Yes. And I've been blessed and graced for about the last two years not having to take a salary from the ministry. But people who do that, that doesn't necessarily mean they're false because they have that but usually there are leaders or prophets that do whatever they can to gain a following to keep people for their own gain the building up of their own kingdom Come on. 
And usually, you will find that what they preach, they will, well, let me just say what point number three is. <laughs> Actually, it's point number four. Hold on. It's no, it's point number three. Sorry. <laughs> I, have, I have things that identify the, the false prophet and then the true prophet. And I see the prof, false prophet side here and the true prophet here. And they're both numbered one, two, three. And I got mixed up on which page I was on. All right. So y'all help me. So point number three is this. They will tell you what you want to hear according to your desire. Yeah. Yes. They will tell you what you want to hear to keep you. They will tell you what you want to hear to keep you. Folks, I don't mind calling sin what it is. I don't mind hurting your feelings. If it makes you leave, it makes you leave. I will miss you. I wish you were here. But here's the deal. I'm not going to tell you something to appease you to keep you. Amen. I have been labeled as a harsh preacher. But you may not be able to tell that with the way I've been preaching in the seasons. A different race on me. But, man, I preach on hell every Wednesday night as a youth pastor. That's my wife. Sometimes I'm like, man, maybe you should preach a little on grace. But I was just, had that evangelist in me. I had to preach sin. And you go on to hell, let's get right. Let's get the altar and get saved. Yeah. <laughs> huh? So, what you need to know. Y'all don't be talking. This is my sermon. Amen. <laughs> So, what you need to know is that people will tell you what you want to hear to keep you. Matter of fact, this is what 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 says. It says they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own <laughs> desires. False prophets like people who want to be told certain things. <clears throat> you want to be told? That people will go to a church where they're told that, hey, you can have a homosexual lifestyle and still make heaven. People will come for that. But here's another thing I found like people will come for. Because the, the, the English Standard Version translates this verse this way. It doesn't say according to their desires. It says according to their passions. What are you passionate about? So there are people that would have me preach because they were passionate about loud, fiery, toe stepping on preaching. Help us, they really didn't. They, they, somebody could preach the same truth in a voice like this, and they would discredit them as a preacher because it wasn't loud, and they weren't red-faced, and they weren't screaming and spitting all over the place. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, it's a, see, what happens is false prophets and teachers know how to be charismatic to speak into that and to gain favor with that. Yeah. Right. God can use that. that if that's the way that God uses you in your gifting, and that's the way the anointing kind of flows out in you, God will use that to open door. But too many times people have me come just because I was the entertainment that they liked. A lot of times, here's how people pick a church. Music, and do I like how the preacher preaches? Yeah. Yeah. Not as he preaching truth, but do I like how he preaches? And is this where God's called me? Because I can tell you there's been times where I feel like God called me things and I didn't necessarily like the way the preacher did things or preached. Right. Mm -hmm. But God had me sit there. So, when it comes to false prophets, they know how to pick on the desires of those who are living according to the flesh. That's just like what Jude, or Jude chapter 4 says about, hey, they're preaching that you can live any way you want to and still make heaven. Who will not show up for that? And if you make the music good enough and you have plenty of programs for the family, they'll keep putting their money in the offering plate, right? Right? Not saying that they have good music and they have programs and they have something for the family, that that's the motive there. But let me tell you, they know how to work the system. Right. If you're not growing towards God and away from sin, if you're not growing more in love with Jesus under the teaching that you are in, you might be under false teaching. Mm -hmm. If they never preach on sin, they never preach on hell, they never preach on unpleasant things.
Well, actually, that, that, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm not really staying on my notes, y'all. It all, see, here's the thing. All, this is what made this so hard, putting this together. It's so many things bleed over with one for another. Yeah. They really overlap. So I'm really, all these points are just a little bit of Maybe I need to do another study on expository preaching. That would help me with this, I guess, supposedly. But I know some people that are false preachers, and this is how they, they preach expositorily. And I'm not too sure if I want to get into that. Because I, anyway, not everybody preaches expository as a false preacher, so just make sure on YouTube you don't like get mad, get offended. That's okay. Why don't you get in a prayer closet and hear from God for yourself? Amen. All right. Amen. So, really, number four has to do with, I put it as number four, their intent is to mislead you with false words so that they can have gain. We've already touched on that. But they do, they, they, Jude 16 says they speak with flattery to gain advantage. They'll give you a moment on the spotlight, a moment on the scene, a moment of, oh, I love how you do this, just to keep you. Right. Micah 3, 5 says, Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against him who puts nothing in their mouth. In other words... The prophet will tell the people what they want to hear who are putting food in their mouth or increase in their belly. Then when people aren't giving into that, oh, they're false. Wow. But when people love you and they have had nothing to gain with you, says a lot about who they really are. Wow, that's good. It's amazing the way that I'll just say this. When I was at Teen Challenge, man, all the pastors loved me. Now I became an evangelist. And then some of the, the pastors that did love me as an evangelist, now I'm kind of like doing something different. <laughs> it's weird. It's like, right. what were they gaining from me? Yeah. A Sunday off? Nothing for them to give me a hundred bucks to come for a Sunday. That's easy. Cheap entertainment. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But you need to know that there's intent to mislead. Even Jeremiah 5, 30 to 31 says, An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule on their authority, and my people love it so. Prophets can prophesy falsely. People will eat it up. They'll be misled because of those false words. Number five, here's something that you need to know about false prophets. They will, they will have lives that bear fruit according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Dang. That's it, Granny. Here's something you need to know. Jesus gave the test of a false prophet in Matthew 7. We'll read verses 15 through 20. It says, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous. What is a ravenous? A very, very hungry wolf. Mm -hmm. They're in it for gain. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit and cut down and thrown into the fire, thus you will recognize it by their fruits. What people produce long term speaks for themselves. It's true. I'm getting ahead of myself because this all laps over. You need to know that it takes time sometimes to discern what is real and what is not. What the fruit does not get produced overnight. Now, all the things that I've said this morning are good. They are a staple. That, but here's Here's the danger of what I've even told you. It's easy to look in the Word and see the red flags. However, when it comes to deception, the red flag is not always obvious because what we see in the Word, to watch for a red flag, sometimes in the natural eye and with your natural ear, you neither see or hear it. It's true. Yeah. 
Discerning the spirits is not something you can do naturally or through head knowledge even. Mm -hmm. There's great that we have this teaching from the Word and we should watch for these things, but you have to learn to operate in the spirit to discern spiritual things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. You must learn to grow in discernment or the gift of discernment. A lot of people think that discernment is easy as flipping a switch on. Even operate, if God gives you the gift of discernment, you think that I'm always going to be able to flip that switch on and no. no. You grow in gifting. Yeah. You grow in gifting. Just because you're gifted doesn't mean you're always right. That's right. 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 That's so how can I know, even when you see red flags, you can see red flags in even true ministers and true prophets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing that distinguishes and allows you to discern if they're true or not is what you're picking up in the spirit. Yeah. So how do I pick these things up in the spirit? There's a couple of things I want you to know about that. But the first one's really going to make it maybe as simple as possible. You have to spend Time to know what the Spirit of God sounds like, feels like, in the Spirit. That's right. I cannot tangibly put words into what that really looks like, feels like, tastes like, until you experience it for yourself. That's why Jesus said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Because what the Spirit says isn't always picked up with the natural ear or natural eye. There's a place where you hear Him, and it's not with this. Everybody look at me. It's yeah. not with this. Yeah. It's in here. Yeah. It's like you just bam it. Yeah. Boom. It's a weight that comes, and you just know so deep. And you don't get there until you learn to spend time, yes. quantity time, with the Spirit of God. Yeah. The reason why we lack discernment in the house of God is because many of us have not spent enough time with God to know yeah. God in such a way that yeah. when the false spirit and yeah. minister shows up, we don't know the difference because we have not spent time with the real. Yeah. We yeah. can go yeah. through and look at all the red flags all day long, but if you work at a bank, you don't learn counterfeit money by handling counterfeit. You learn counterfeit money when you begin to handle the real thing on a daily basis. So that is why it's important for us to get in a prayer yeah. closet, stay there till we know Jesus has shown up and come. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Brady. Ooh. That's Ooh. good. Yeah. That's right. Tyler reset season. I know you said we're going to have worship on Sunday nights here pretty soon. Well, guess what? We probably won't ever do it on Sunday morning because we need to be a house of prayer that knows the presence of God. Oh, Y'all got, got me fired up to preach this morning now. Most of us have not spent enough time with God in secret to know the difference. We know Netflix. We know YouTube TV. We know Instagram. We know Facebook. And you can glean from people who teach, preach on all those platforms, but nothing takes the place of sitting and waiting with Jesus. You learn the Spirit of God by waiting and being with Him. You want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit? you got to sit and wait. You feel like God's called you to be a prophet? Can I tell you? You will sit in silence more than you speak. Yes. Elijah the prophet sat in silence in the wilderness by the brook for how many years? Three years before he delivered the word of the Lord on Mount Carmel to the prophets of Baal. And guess what? In the last day, says God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. The sons and daughters will prophesy. God, God will not pour out the spirit on the people who do not make room for the spirit to be poured out upon them. Mm -hmm. We got to make time, room. Yes, yes. In a day where things are streamlined, quick, microwave, we don't know about patience and lingering and waiting on the Lord. The seed that spread it up quickly fades away quickly. You have to sit. 
Hey, how many of you, some of you I think I sent to Messenger, but there is a devotional on the Bible app called Rooted. How many of y'all accepted that invite? Oh, yeah. If you don't know about it, go to it. It's a guy from Jesus Culture in Bethel did it. I found it a couple years ago, and every year I revisit it at least once. It is so deep. Usually these, these uh, devotionals on the Bible app are so cheesy. I don't like them. But then I found one or two. I'm like, this is the word of the Lord. There's somebody who actually sat with Jesus and heard from him. And when I read that devotional, it was the way of the Lord in that place. you got to learn to love the cave. Yes. That's what it said. you got to learn to love the cave. you got to learn the closet, the secret place with God. That's how you're going to be discerning. That's how you're going to learn to operate in the Spirit. Yes. Yeah. It is great. We have tons of people that hear Bible teaching week in and week out, and they hear man to be their teacher, but they never take time to let the Holy Spirit be their teacher. Right. See, there's only so much I can teach you. Even if we had meetings every night, and I taught you, and I taught you, and I taught you, and I preached to you, and I preached to you, and I preached to you, what I have to bring does not replace what the Holy Spirit wants yes, to teach God. you. Yes. Operating yes. in the Spirit, knowing the difference between true and false, does not come overnight. It comes by learning from the Holy Spirit, who is yes. your teacher. Yes. If you don't spend time with the teacher, you can't learn. That's right. So this is why we've got to get into the presence of God. We've got to know the Spirit of God, how He feels, how He speaks. Yes. You'll be sensitive to that. When you spend time with you, you become sensitive to who He is. And then when something shows up that is not him, instead of seeing red flags here, you see the red flag here. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's important to have that kind of discernment and know the presence of God because that will allow you to discern the second thing about discerning between true and false. You need to know the difference between a false teacher or prophet versus a wrong teacher. Teacher or right. prophet. Yeah. So good, Greg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Important. It is important. Teachers, well. preachers, ministers, yeah. and prophets can get it wrong. Yep. That's right. Yeah. This is a that statement is a stumbling block for many people. Yeah. Because in their minds they think that the prophet, a true prophet, can never make a mistake or get it wrong. They are not Jesus, and they are not God. Right. Jesus and God never gets it wrong, but man can get it wrong even if they are a trusted mouthpiece. That's right. Yes. So good. A false teacher has an intent to deceive you to gain from you. A true prophet that misses it makes an honest mistake. Mm -hmm. And just like you and I are learning from God, and God has given us grace... In our development into maturity, so we must give grace to people that speak but might miss it. Yes. Right. So good, Grady. Yes. So that is from teaching to the prophetic utterance of a yes. prophet. Yes. That's right. That's good. That's good stuff. Well, I just don't know about that. First of all, let me tell you, anybody who's a true prophet or a minister, when God calls them, they're like an infant. Yes. An infant's got to grow into maturity. When that infant begins to become a toddler, begins to walk, they stumble and they fall a lot. And even after some of us grown folk learn to walk as an adult, how many times have you tripped and fallen? Yes. Just because you are mature does not exempt, and you know how to walk, and you've been walking for 20, 30, 40, 50 years does not exempt you from the ability to stumble and fall in walking. That's right. So good. Here's the great thing. Mature prophets and ministers can make a mistake, and usually it's those, you know, there's those times when you're walking and you stumble and you catch yourself so you don't face plant into the concrete. Because we tend to take, well, I know how to walk, and we take it for granted. We're not careful. We're not concerning about where our next step is taking. And then there's those times where we really hit it hard and scratch up our face. <laughs> those are good because they remind us that we need to be careful how we walk. As a minister, as a preacher, as a prophet, whatever way you function, you need to be careful how you walk in yeah. that gift and call. Because when you fall, when you stumble, especially you scratch up your face, everybody tends to see it. Yes. Yep. And they laugh at you, snicker at you, so it can do so you have to be careful. When you do that, we have to be mature enough to understand right. to give people room to grow. Yes, yeah. 
What has hindered people growing in their anointings and callings is because of a mistake that is made. Yeah. Yeah. People would throw a stone at that and then they never step into yeah. that gift because oh, wow. people did not nourish people. Right. I want you to know that if you ever get out of order here, and I'll let you know you're out of order. Just like Larry here tried to say something while the guy said, not yet. He knows I love him. Don't you, Larry? We're going to talk, aren't we, Larry? We always talk. Me and Larry met the other day. We had a good conversation about 30 minutes. He rebuked me. I was on the floor crying. No, he didn't. <laughs> but when I bring correction, or I say something's not time, or you make a mistake, Am I going to kick you to the curb, Bethany? No. Kevin? No. Ask Gabby. I locked her outside the house last night. No, I didn't. <laughs> Have I ever made you guys go without because you made a mistake? No. So, guys, listen, if you make a mistake in your gifting, if you, if you feel like you have a word and it's in left field and you miss it, apologize to the person that you misspoke and they will Lord repent and go to your prayer closet to get a fresh so clarity yeah. from him. Because we need to know that somebody can be a true thing and miss it. There are people that are really speaking ugly things about Jeremiah Johnson. Yep. Right? Oh, he yeah. prophesied that Trump was going to win the election. Trump did not win the election. Can I tell you that he has a history of words being prophesied and coming to pass? And let me tell you, his character and his integrity and the way he walks. So whenever somebody gives a word that does not come to pass... And you see the red flag? The question is, what type of fruit is in their life? Do they yes. love their wife? Yes. Are they honor? Are they, they well, ruling their household well? Are they, how are they treating their spouse? So good, Brady. Mm -hmm. What does their life look like? Yes. What does their finances look like? And when you see those things in order, then you can know that there's a wrong prophet and not a false prophet. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And we have to use wisdom in that. Because if you begin to call somebody who's a false prophet that is not, that's dangerous, and I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Number three, as I kind of mentioned earlier, when it comes to discerning the true, you need to know that it takes, time is needed to determine the fruit of a true prophet. Time is needed. Time is needed sometimes to determine. That's good. Okay. So... Three and a half years ago, almost three and a half years ago, the, the vision of the hub was planted in my spirit. When I began to make steps in that direction, some things were said about this not being God. God was not in this. Yeah. God was not in this. And there were seasons where you're like, Lord, nobody showed up at the tent meetings. I don't say right. nobody. Two people showed up. <laughs> we think, well, nobody showed up, but two yeah. people showed up. I was going to, to Disney with our on a family vacation, and Josh and Bethany and uh, Josh Renard were going to do the tent meeting. Literally, nobody showed up. They began worshiping, and then a the guy came in. So we had one. Literally, I had one showed up on the night when. So it. So guys, let me tell you. There, over time, when people said this wouldn't work, it's still working. So guess what? We're still not out of the clear yet. Because sometimes it takes years to, for fruit to really produce yeah. to reveal what you really are. Right, that's mm -hmm. good. Just because we're still here, now here, over, over a year in a building does not mean that, hey, we've got enough fruit to prove we're a legitimate ministry. What people say doesn't matter. The fruit you produce over time is what will speak for itself. Jesus said this in Matthew 7, verse 33 to 35. He said, John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man comes eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. People were saying things about John the Baptist and saying things about Jesus being false. Right. But what did Jesus say? Wisdom will be justified or vindicated by what it produces. Yes. Yes, right. The fruit you produce, the children you produce, what you produce long term either verifies, confirms that you're a real deal or you're not the real deal. Mm -hmm. 
You need to know that when people say things about you, you know are not true, keep your mouth quiet. Right. Walk in your honesty and integrity, and it will begin to speak for itself. Yes. When people were first saying things about me, when I first started that tent ministry, people would call me and say, well, what is really going on? I heard this. And you know what my answer to them was? I'm going to let my honesty, my integrity, and my character speak for me long term. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the one going around trying to defend myself. Because if we're the real deal, it will produce. Mm -hmm. God is really doing it. It's going to last. Yeah. Here's the danger with discerning. Because the Bible does tell us that when we see false teachers and preachers, we are to call them out. We are to call them out. However, if you have not went into the place of prayer, the due diligence, and you call somebody false, that is actually true, when you call somebody false who might just be wrong and not false, then you are in a dangerous area. You bet. Listen, don't be hasty in declaring someone or something to be false. That's good. Yeah. Our whole ministry should not be always fault finding. Yes. That is dangerous. You'll yes. become the Pharisee, you'll become the legalistic one. You will open yourself up to right. devils itself. Yeah. Right. Because here's the thing. In Matthew 12, verse 31, Jesus talks about the unforgivable sin. Does anybody know what the unforgivable sin is? Jesus says the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So what is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Not people tell me, well, it's just the people that don't give their life to the Lord. The Lord can't forgive that. No, that's just... that's. But if you, you got to read the Bible. you got to look in context. That's right. The context of why Jesus said that, because you read Matthew 12, they were trying to tell him, Jesus, you're not of God, and the reason we know this is because the only way you're able to cast out devils is because you got a devil yourself. Yeah. Jesus was not casting out devils by the power of the devil. He was casting them out as the Spirit of God. The blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is when you attribute a work of God to the act, to the working of Satan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's and it's not something you do unintentionally. See, the Pharisees knew that Jesus was the real deal, but because it was messing up what they had to gain, it was tearing down their kingdom. They had to say that what was actually God is the devil. They were having to pervert. And Jake, don't y'all pay attention to my fumblings. <laughs> y'all let the devil mess y'all up right now in Jesus' name. No. <laughs> Hear me. They knew Jesus was the real deal, but they tried to put his real deal, his realness, and attribute that to the devil. When you're speaking out and saying that somebody is false when they are true, you're on the edge of that. That's right. It's dangerous. So here's what you need. The Bible says that we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. When things red flags, when things begin to not set right, we need to not be so presumptuous. Because I mean, if somebody speaks a word and we're immediately like, okay, they misrepresented the word of the Lord, and you immediately call them false, you better watch out. Right. Because even though they spoke and they misrepresented the nature of God, how many of you by your lives and the way you live your lives have misrepresented God too? You're a mouthpiece either to your voice or your actions. Amen. That's right. That's so true. if you don't live up to every standard, you're perfect, could it be that you're a misrepresentation of God and how you live? That's good, good. Are you a false prophet or are you a wrong one? Right now you're a wrong one because you, nobody will fully be able to live up to this, but your life should live out in a way that you can validate that you are the real deal. That's yes. good. Good. Fruit is produced long term. And you have to let the Holy Spirit be your teacher in how to discern. Yeah. I've given you some good things this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. but there's, some, there's, there's a lot of holes in what I've given to you this morning. I haven't given you the exhaustive, like I said, go study. Second Peter, it talks about people giving over to sensuality. How many ministers that are preaching are finding out that they've got two or three women in the church or cheating on their wife. They're stealing money. It's there in 2 Peter, the things we're seeing. It talks about that. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't have a life that characterized by God, they are a false teacher. We have to go to prayer with the Holy Spirit be our teacher in these things and fill in the gaps that I've not been able to fill in for you. 
And even if I spent the next five weeks breaking down every verse, dissecting the original language, give you all the whole knowledge and understanding, can I tell you that knowledge will puff up. Brings, knowledge can bring pride. Hear this. Knowledge can bring pride. Pride brings forth death. Yes. So here's what you need to do. You need to study yourself to death, but pray yourself alive again. Yes. When you pray, the Holy Spirit brings to life the very death your own knowledge and study brings forth. Mm -hmm. It'll keep you humble. It will allow the Holy Spirit That's to good. teach you mm -hmm. what He says versus leaning on your own understanding and your own ability to study. Mm -hmm. That's good. My dependence is upon the Lord this morning. Because I can't put all the pieces of the puzzle together for you. I have to trust that the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you will teach you all things. Yes. Yeah. And you have to depend on the Holy Spirit to teach you things over time. Yes. So no, Jesus said in the last days many false prophets would arise. But however, in the last days, says God, part of my spirit, the sons and daughters will prophesy. And we need to know the difference. And we need to lean into the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, I believe that the reason why the Lord has us in this reset season and why things are going a lot slower than what you would say a quote-unquote church plant should be doing is because the Lord is trying to teach us some things because when word gets out, when we start yeah. advertising deliverance, we start advertising more revival meetings and stuff like that, we're going to need to know who's coming in and pick up on Amen. these things. About that. So this morning, anybody fed by the word of the Lord this amen. morning? Amen. Good? Yeah, that's good. All right, amen. And so, and I just want to reiterate, I don't want to uh, beat a dead horse, but this week in your study, go read 2 Peter 2, the whole chapter. All right, go read the whole book of 2 Peter. It all kind of ties yes. together into false leaders and teaching and Christian conduct and character. Mm -hmm. God really wants to build your character over your gifting. Mm -hmm. right. Your gifting and anointing can take you to a place where your character cannot keep you. Yes. Your character's not on point. If you're not careful, you start going the wrong way, God will be the boss that fires you and lets you keep on working. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So, guys, let's Hey, ouch, yeah, amen. Like, may the Lord pull the reins yeah. back on us a little bit. Because, yeah. guys, can I tell you, I, man, I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to, I would even love to have some midweek prayer meetings, services, yes. youth yeah. services. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm like, and you know, and, yeah. and I mean, who, why would the Lord want us to pray? But, but as far as adding something extra, right. like the Lord's just like, pull back, wait a minute. Because the last thing I want to do is be busy with all these religious things and not be able to actually do the real work of the ministry. There's only so much you can absorb through teaching in a week. Mm -hmm. Go to the school systems. They cram, cram, cram these kids. We don't remember half the stuff we learned 18 years in school. Because uh, yeah. it's fast, fast, fast. Jam pack, jam pack, jam pack. Yeah. We're on the long path. We build slow. We are on the long path. We're not going to get in a hurry. But I know these things that the Lord has put in our heart, they will come to pass and they will come to fruition at the right time. Yes. Right. So. We're going to intercede this morning. Yes. But before we intercede, Brother Kevin, would you mind just putting on some of that music? And uh, I just really sense before we intercede that we really just take some time before the Lord on our face, on our knees. And this is what I want you to do this morning because I look at, I look at each one of you and I believe that the, every one of us is a true believer here this morning there's something I can't see. I can't see what's really going on in your heart. The Bible says, no one need to test and examine the false prophet versus the true prophet and minister. But 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says they examine yourself and test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Because mm -hmm. the sad thing about being deceived is you don't know you're, you're deceived. Well, you should be testing yourself and examine your heart. I think it's been a while, but I think I remember Isaiah Saldivar, he was preaching and he mentioned something about false ministers. He said, I'm always examining myself because I don't want to be that false guy. Yes. Because every one of us could be stepping in deception and not know it. That's why we got to examine and test and make sure we sit with the Holy Spirit and that we know Him. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? And he said, I never knew you. Wow. 
Man, that's mind blowing, guys. And Jesus yeah. didn't deny the validity of the prophesying or the yeah. demon casting yeah. out or the working of miracles. He didn't say they weren't real. He said, You just didn't know me. That's deep. Guys, we gotta know, we gotta know the Lord. If we focus on knowing the Lord and loving the Lord and sitting at his feet, yeah. man, that's where it's at. Yes. You were born again in an altar. You heard, you baptized the Holy Spirit at the altar. <laughs> Everything we do with God is at that place where we get with him. Everything. And if you see red flags in your own life, well, I see this in my life and this in my life and this. You go to God and say, God, get it under the blood. Yes. Remove this out. Lord, wash me, wash me, wash me. He will. Jesus said, the one that comes to me, I'll by no means drive out or cast out. Keep coming to Jesus. Keep putting those things under the blood. Keep seeking him and examining yourself. But this morning, I want you to examine yourself. Do you know the Lord this morning? Do we really know the Lord? Are we really for Him and His purposes? Is the intent of our heart really for Him? So I'm going to ask you to come and find a place to pray right now. And let's seek the Lord together. And let's examine ourselves.